Hello, everyone. Frank and Darren back again, the Slaughterland Movie Podcast. Darren, we're finally getting to Red Foreman's request. He won the raffle for the best and worst of entries. He picked three uh, movies, and we decided to go with Wolfent, a 1970s classic. Not a werewolf movie, but a wolf movie. 80s. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they blend in, yeah. don't they? They blend they in the 70s and the 80s. Well, it, it kind of it's 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 a movie that that always gets lumped into the same conversation as as an American Wolf in London and and the Howling because I think they all came out within a sort of the space of a year of each other to the point where you can't accuse one of copying the other because they were released so so closely. I I don't like like I like to compare American Werewolf and the Howling. Mm-hmm. I don't really like lumping that into this conversation because it's a completely different thing, isn't it? You can lump this it into like the a, gray, can't you, with Liam Neeson? Yeah, something like that you could, for sure, yeah. I just but, thought about but, that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a, first and foremost, this is like a cop movie rather than a wolf movie, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, it's the original uh, Riggs and Murtaugh. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, my, <laughs> that's what it's like. Or Running Scared, if you remember Gregory <laughs> Billy Hines Crystal. in that Billy Crystal movie. <laughs> um but yeah, directed by Michael Wadley, um, a good cast. Um, Albert Finney, absolutely love Albert Finney. He looks like of... Brian Cox. Well, if you look at this sequence here, he looks like um, John McEnroe. Look, don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Albert Finney, Diane Verona, uh, sorry, Venora, uh, Gregory Hines, the great Tom... Gregory Hines. Yeah, yeah, Gregory Hines, fantastic, and Tom Noonan, who's not great a bad as dancer. Well. I heard. Mm, yeah, Gregory Hines. Yeah. <laughs> tap if you've seen that was it yeah. tap i think it was and um white knights i think he was in that as well edward james almost as well as who plays eddie in this so a really, Battlestar really good... galactica yeah yeah and dick o'neill who's the police chief guy mm-hmm. um yeah interesting the way he goes out which compares similarly to the police chief in american wolf in london yeah um but we'll get to that we'll get to that in a bit uh, I'm first. I got to say, Darren, I'm offended by this movie because they had to get people from Spanish descent uh, to play Native Americans. Is that right? He's Mexican, is Edward James Olmos? Yeah, yeah. So he's playing Native American, going up there and fixing wow. our bridges. Yeah, <laughs> it wouldn't happen today. No, no, not at wouldn't. all. Let's 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 start with uh, your best character, Dewey Wilson, or Albert Finney. Yep, I like this character. He's it's kind of he—he he was he was really different, uh, different to the usual sort of seventies, eighties New York cop stereotype. Like I said before, he looks like John McEnroe in this film. Albert Finney never ever put a bad performance in, as far as I'm concerned. He's been in some absolutely brilliant. From you know, obviously he's a Brit mm-hmm. from the north of England, almost like a kind of British Marlon Brando. When he was around in his younger days. Is he an institution um, over there in England, Albert Finney? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Some of the classics that he's been in over here, like um, Tom Jones and Saturday Night, Sunday Morning, and and uh, going on to things like this, and then Skyfall, and um, Annie. what was the other thing? Annie, and yeah, he's just been in some great movies. Um, he, I was blessed enough to meet him about... 20 years ago really um through work yeah i was i was working on a uh, on a particular film and um he was in it and he came in to see the film and he did this really gracious thing which um a lot of old actors do which is go up and see the projectionist before the movie starts and i was actually in the projection room at the time and he came in and shook all our hands and said hello and chatted chatted to us for like five or ten minutes before the film came on and he was an absolute gentleman That was about 10 years before he died. Obviously, he went on and did Skyfall and then kind of died a few years after that. But I think he died in 2019, if I remember right. Yeah, not too long. Not too long. He he actually didn't need to deny his uh, OBE. He said it was was just basically for snobs, pretentious Mm. snobs. He didn't didn't, didn't want it, which is kind of gracious, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah. But I I do have to agree with you because... You know, every time I see Albert Finney, he reminds me of someone's grandfather. You just want to go up to him, like Donald Pleasance. You just want to go up and hug him and say, mm. "We need you. We need you yeah. back." Because I don't think Albert Finney puts in a bad performance ever. No, he doesn't. He, he doesn't. Even if it's a bad movie, you hope for him to yeah. save it. 
and he, and uh, Dewey and his character is actually somebody I would work with. Mm. I think he's a great guy. He had his story is like he he, he investigates cults or weird yeah. occurrences, and mm -hmm. something happened with him and his family, and he just went off the deep end. Yeah, and, and they bring uh, him back in. They pull him back in. Yep. Yeah, he almost reminds me a little bit of um, not. I mean, his style's completely different, but um, of Atkins in some ways in this film. He's that mm. kind of. I mean, he was only in his kind of forties in this movie but looked a lot older and kind of worn than he actually was. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, was a little bit of a womanizer, I guess, in it as well. Um, not to the extent Atkins is, but there were shades of <laughs> shades of Atkins in his performance, I thought. But yeah, no, a really, really cool and laid back performance and a different kind of New York cop. And can I ask, is was this filmed in some of the better parts of New York? <laughs> This was probably filmed at the later Ed Koch and Mayor Dinkins type uh, era where, yeah, New York was just shit. It was absolutely no. hell. Terrible, yeah, yeah. didn't it? it it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, what John Carpenter did with St. Louis and said, that's New York. And mm. everyone said he could just go to New York and find the same shit. <laughs> yeah. it but it was cheaper. It, and... Uh, I, yeah, New York is absolutely awful, but this was where they were trying to revitalize the city by knocking old buildings down, mm. repurposing them for other areas and, and building up the city. And it just became too expensive. And, um, you know, it, it took other mayors to come in. We're still trying to fix the place. We're still mm. trying to fix it. I mean, yeah, Darren, yeah. how many buildings have you seen uh, in, in in the UK that have been up there for hundreds of years and just squalor? You're like, knock the fucking thing down already. Yeah, it just yeah. looks like an eyesore. Graffiti yeah. all over the place. You know, bums fucking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what, as our friend Dave McRae said, you know, go into New York, get the alleyways, get the Empire State Building. You know, get the people, you know, stabbing each other and, and bums fucking, you know, that's that's New York <laughs> right there. Uh, what you do see in some of this, you do see people strung out, you know, they're just yeah, it's, getting it's high. They're like, oh, 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 oh. And, it, and it does make you wonder why Carpenter went to St. Louis to film Escape from New York. Yeah, um, car, when he had this walls. in New York. Yeah, yeah, exactly, with cardboard walls. When he had this in New York, you know, he could have used. But maybe Wolfen was in the way, I don't New know. New York had too many ladders for Kurt Russell, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> he only needed that one. Yeah. <laughs> but I do agree with you, yeah, Dewey. Uh, I cannot, yeah. I cannot not pick uh, 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 Albert Finney. Close would mm -hmm. be Gregory Hines. A yeah, very close yeah. Gregory Hines. Yeah. Uh, Is he still with us? No, Gregory he Hines? passed I don't away. Think he is, is he? Yeah, yeah. long yeah. time ago, unfortunately. Yeah. Hell of a dancer. Hell of a dancer. Mm. Pretty good. Great actor. Yeah. Uh, your worst character. Becca Neff. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> Darren, if we she didn't have nothing her, to offer. Yeah. we wouldn't have seen Albert Finney's ass. Yeah, exactly. Which is awful. <laughs> That's what was kind of reminding me of that Atkins in Halloween 3 because he did that kind of obligatory ass shot in there as well, which was a bit sort of, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did but, one of these, right? We're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, and who wants to see Albert Finney get laid anyway, for God's sake? What about the <laughs> lip the lip smacking sound? Like the Yeah. It was, all, <laughs> it, it was all a bit overblown, wasn't it? Um, yeah. But she, but she, you know, it, she's got really nothing to add to this film whatsoever, and and she's like you say, she's just nothing but to get Albert Finney laid. That's yeah. it. She's a hematologist or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, also, I, I would put Ross in there, the executive security agent, who's in that room that looks like uh, uh, a space odyssey, you know, and 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 just blink, just light, what is lights with, blinking, yeah, what is blinking. Over. It was like, and, and you know, it reminds me, every time I see blinking lights in a room, and you're supposed to think that it's a, a big workshop and, me and, and mechanical stuff is happening and everything's really busy. Um, 
I always think of William Shatner in Airplane 2, where he's like, they're just blanking and <laughs> blanking. Flashing and blinking. And, blinking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, the, one of his uh, lieutenants come over and say, what do we do about all these lights? Well, put them in sequence. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they've just used one of the sets from a 60s Star Trek film, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, or TV show and just lifted it over. There's no point to any of those lights flashing like that because none of them are labeled. So how the fuck are you going to know what's going on? And the personal security guy, Ross, is, is, is pointless too, isn't he? He yeah. doesn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. He goes I after agree. the, the he goes after the um, the terrorists, which is kind of like the weather underground over here, <laughs> you know. And 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 they're just like, yeah, we did it. We killed them all. We're glad we did it. Okay, we got them. Like really, you just <laughs> you're pointless. Usually, you say our boss died, so we're kind of out of a job. Um, but yeah, I mean those two, especially Rebecca. Yeah. You know, yeah. Albert, please put it away. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need it. Wouldn't it be funny if his wig was on his ass? When <laughs> <laughs> wig? Yeah, come on. That had to be a wig, wasn't it? <laughs> did you think? He had a good head of hair, did Albert Finney. Well, I don't know. But then he shaved it off for for, uh, for Annie yeah. a few years later. Would it be yeah, funny maybe, if he yeah. had Annie's wig on? <laughs> <laughs> it could be that. It actually could be that. When was Annie filmed? Annie was like eighty two, wasn't it? Yeah, so eighty two. Maybe like he that, was trying. Yeah. He was keeping it warm for her for the next film. That was it. Oh. Um, <laughs> all right, your your best line. Best line. <laughs> well, we got Mister Strickland in here from um, from Back to the Future, haven't we? Yeah, and yep. uh, and Top Gun, um, and he's ha- examining pubic hair under a microscope. <laughs> And he does the job, and they all have a look at these pubes under the microscope, and, and he, 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 you know, gives them what they need to hear, and they walk out, and 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 for some reason, Albert Finney turns around and, and is kind of abusing him because he's follically challenged, uh, and says, "Thanks, Baldy, keep combing it." Now I don't want to laugh at bald people or anything here, but it did make me laugh. I'm sorry. Well, back, yeah, back then was the balding was a joke. Not now, is it? Oh no, no, no. oh no, oh no, no. I'm out of place now with this. Yeah. Mop. <laughs> we go on Ronnie and Blake show. Remember we said you're the freak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty weird too. You know, I would like to see uh, Mr. Strickland. I'm sorry, uh, you know, I, for, I know his name, but I forgot it. If he mentioned if he picked up those pews and went, <laughs> he was like, I know where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think for my my best line is, let me see here. I had to write this down. Uh, well, let's see what happened to my man. Two bullet holes upside the head. See? You shouldn't have been fucking with that bitch. <laughs> what? That was Reg that was Reginald Val Johnson, where he was the orderly in or the, the coroner and he, he was checking out the uh, checking out the corpse and he goes, Let's see yeah. what my man here is. Up oh, two bullets two bullets upside the head. You shouldn't have been fucking with that bitch. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, it was yeah, yeah, him yeah, yeah. saying that, you know, a jealous lover came in and shot him. <laughs> but we never hear Reginald Val Johnson swear. So that's why I put it in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. He's credited as morgue attendant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Should have been fucking Baldy, with that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Baldy is James Tolkien. Mm. Almost Tolkien. Um, yeah. yeah, James Tolkien. Is James Tolkien still alive? Yes, I saw him at, in, Parsi- in uh, Parsippity. He was doing the... Um, oh, is in, he yeah. really? Yeah, he's in his 90s. He was doing the uh, Back to the wow. Future reunion. Wow, 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 wow. Yep. That's cool. Why was yeah, he in wh- Top Gun? Because he's 90. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, your worst line. Okay. Um, so it's when uh, uh, Dewey goes to the top of the bridge and, um, and, and confronts Eddie, where he basically kind of tells him that he can shapeshift. Um, which is kind of like a hiding in plain sight type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he turned, and Eddie turns around to Dewey and says, uh, I can swim like a fish and fuck like a bunny. Shim with the best of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because he says he's an eagle too. Yeah, exactly. And then we see more uh, ass after that. <laughs> There's a lot of it in this film. There's a, a lot, lot of male ass, though. <laughs> and and um, 
the sunny side up part of it as well in the mall. In the beginning, yes, yes, yeah, we yeah. see a little um, yeah, phallic. It's it's kind of like um, the sequence in um, Halloween Kills, yes, where everybody's just uncovered. Yeah, no yeah. boobs, nothing from the female anatomy, no equal nudity opportunities here. It's all male. I'm offended. You, you don't I'm want offended. But you don't need dead boobs though. Come on, Frank. I've been with a few of those myself. <laughs> Uh, my worst line is is from Albert Finney, and it annoyed the shit out of me at the end where he goes, "Hunting, hunting, territory, territory, terrorism, terror, <laughs> groundbreaking, groundbreaking ceremony. It's awful." <laughs> Just repeat the same thing. Yeah. Terror. <laughs> Terrorism. Yeah. It's like something out of the West Wing. Yeah. You know, just yeah. groundbreaking. I'm like, come on, get, Albert. Get, get on with it. Well, he's a very kind of slow and methodical uh, actor, isn't he? He doesn't, there's no, there's no rushing around with Albert Finney. You just kind of, you know, tend to hang about and creep about and things like that. That's a bit under the dock, isn't there, there when he's keeping his, keeping his eye on Eddie. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's doing that kind of sort of mock transformation or whatever he's doing on Naked. the beach. Yeah, and he's just Naked. kind of... Naked. <laughs> yeah. Sand. <laughs> Sand. Ass. Ass. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> whatever, but, you know, that's yeah. the only thing I had a problem with. It was just like, okay, I get it. I know he's methodically thinking. Mm. You know, and everything, but you, you can't tell what's going on now. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and the reason why yeah. they're doing it, come on. Mm -hmm. right. I know. It took a while for everything to click, didn't it? It's a little, this movie's a little long. A little bit it long. It is. It In does feel tooth. long. And yeah. And, and you know what the other thing is as well that kind of really dates it? I mean, the opening is fantastic. You get that beautiful mm -hmm. shot of Manhattan with the towers and everything. But when they start, flipping to the to the to the wolf's view um it's almost like a technology they've just discovered that mm -hmm. they kind of overuse in this film it's kind of like which has really dated the film now that kind of um which they use imaging yeah yeah thermal imaging type thing um it looks it's been around right it's been around yeah, yeah. I, I think i've not seen it before wolf and i don't think but they just overuse it in this to the point where it's actually not that particularly interesting or scary it's a, um, they had the ability in the camera to do that they just never done it before yeah yeah i guess so i guess so firemen use it all the time now aren't they yeah but you know what it's it's animals don't really see that way hmm. they're, they're they're partly colorblind they could see yeah it's been proven that they've been seeing they could see in high definition yeah but it's yeah. it's they, there's no color mm -hmm. but if you think about it when uh darren most black and white movies, everything is kind of crystal clear. You can make things out. And then we add color. It kind of blurs everything out. And then you have to go through another wash system of making everything crystal clear. That's why if you take a movie that's black and white and you turn it to color, just the picture looks like shit. Yeah. Well, you're asking for information that isn't there, aren't you? So yeah. It's just, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. We don't need to see Psycho in color. It's awful. No. Um, all Night of the Living Dead. Oh, God. That, that was like fluorescent. Yeah, I don't know what was going suits. on with that. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's buried in yellow Everybody and brown. Lime green in it. Yeah. Oh, God, no wonder why they killed themselves. They're depressed. Mm. Look at the suits. Jesus. Plaid. <laughs> Corduroy. God. Yeah. Uh, okay, your best kill. Okay, best kill is, I mentioned it briefly at the start, is the police chief when he Absolutely. gets his hand severed. Yep. Captain gets Warren. Gets in the car. Yep spurting everywhere and then he gets decapitated um i mean dewey does kind of no oh, on a whittington it was gregory hines's character kind of foreshadows it yeah. at the start when he's talking about uh the guillotine and everything in france uh where you know some people when they're decapitated they just they're gone but other people when they were holding their heads up were trying to communicate and 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 move their eyes and things um, and they would and show sort of, their body that yeah. their, their head is separated from their yeah, body. Yeah. Jesus. And with this, you sort of get that at the end here where the police mm -hmm. chief gets decapitated. 
and he's on the floor and he's trying to talk or something, isn't he? His, his mouth's moving it's and like his eyes thing. are moving. It was, yeah. <laughs> so that was interesting. That was the best. I think that's the best kill in the movie. And again, you can't accuse them of stealing anything. Let me just have a look at the release date. So yeah, so so The Howling came out on the 14th of May, 1981. Mm -hmm. um, American Werewolf came out on the 21st of August, 1981. And Wolfen came out in July, 1981. So there was no way that they could have known that, that one movie was doing one gag and it was copied. Productions were at the same it. time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Because as we know, Rick Baker was pulled from uh, by John Landis off of Howling. Yeah, yeah. Which pissed yeah. off Joe Dante. Yeah, yeah. And so so the cop losing his head in this movie has isn't it's not like they've stolen the idea from American Werewolf because Same they, head. they just they just wouldn't have known. But no, it's it's uh, that's a great kill and um uh, you know the the whole kind of back end of this movie I think is is interesting when the reveals come and everything but yeah. Um uh, that's also mine as well. Uh, I thought American Werewolf as soon as I saw it. But the mm. thing is, though, with that, that if you left Captain Warren's fake head in New York, the kids would have used it for a soccer ball. They wouldn't have cared. They'd be like, <laughs> whatever, whatever. I mean, the rest of his body's over there. Big deal. Uh, but it, it doesn't, the, the whole story of them carrying you know, the head from American Werewolf around on the tube. It's just absolutely <laughs> hilarious that people are just like... Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the best. Um, your weakest kill. Now, this is a ridiculous sequence. I don't even know what it's about. And it's not a kill. It's almost a kill. It could have been bad. It could have been really bad. Mm -hmm. But it's when Dewey comes out of his apartment and he's just watching that guy on that bike going down the road who's just making a complete arse of riding his bike and falls off it. Mm -hmm. What what was all that about? I've no idea. Was that something that they caught by accident? I don't know. It's stupid though. <laughs> yes. It's absolutely stupid. Um so that is my almost worst kill. It's a moment of the movie that I have no idea what it's doing in there whatsoever. Um and it you know and the movie takes itself incredibly seriously i think and mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. like there's um there's a comedic theme or a comedic undertone running throughout at all there isn't so to have this moment where this guy just kind of fucking nearly breaks his neck was was just really odd i'm not quite sure what what it's doing there it might also has to do with uh my weakest skill also has to do with somebody on the bike and that's noonan uh as dr ferguson you know, he figures out what's going on and, you know, he knows he's being chased and it just cuts to him falling off and that's it. <laughs> you know, we don't know where, yeah. we don't know what yeah. happened to him. You yeah. know, it's just, it's, we know he's dead. He's gotta be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But no one's, and I don't think anyone ever found him either. No. It's like they fired him. Mitch, I should have <laughs> asked him that when I saw him uh, back in October. I should have said, were you fired from Wolfen? Because we don't yeah. see you at the end. For, for creeping everyone out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're a tall creeper, you know? Just literally, you are the creeper because in, in Action Hero, it's, I think your character is called the creeper. That's right, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was just like, okay, where's Tom Noonan? Where is he? He fell off the bike. He's on the bike. He was on the bike. Where the <laughs> fuck is he? No one knew. And they said, oh, yeah, we can't find him. All right, moving on. You know, Gregory <laughs> Hines is getting measured for tap shoes. You know, in the meantime, <laughs> and I was looking for him. new syrup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your best moment. Um, I think, um, and we talked about this a long time ago when we did a Wheels episode back when we first started. I love the finale of this film mm. um, when you actually see the wolves. Um, they're just am amazing creatures, absolutely beautiful creatures. Trained well. And, and yeah, trained really well. And and the when he's kind of interacting with them, when when he's smashing up the the model of the city, which they or, or the the plans that they're they're wanting to go ahead with, which is on the sacred ground or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I just thought it was a great moment because those the wolves are absolutely gorgeous. The white one, the dark one, absolutely fantastic. So it's really cool to see them in this film. I think. So that was my favorite moment was the was the final bit um when he's smashing the model up uh my best moment is dewey on the bridge darren 
would there be a trail of brown from you going up that bridge and being hooked on by two <laughs> little hooks on the yeah. side? Yeah, yeah, that was. Did they pretty, get him um, to do that to go all the way up there? Probably. Probably. I'd be pissing myself. There'd be people <laughs> on that bridge from their car with the wipers on of how much fucking piss would be coming at me. That, that scared me. That that absolutely is the most terrifying scene is him yeah. going up that high and then seeing, uh, is it Eddie, right? No, it's not Eddie. Was it Eddie? Yeah, he's up there. Yeah, he's up there. And uh, he's, uh, he's just walking around like, you know, nothing's going on. <laughs> Yeah, which going? bridge is that, by the way? I think it's the Brooklyn Bridge. Okay. Um, because uh, I'm thinking it's the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, but Darren, did, were you, did, when you saw that, were you just like, no, don't go up yeah, there? Yeah, no, no, it's not something I would be interested in doing whatsoever. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, it's like you, if you ever saw these photographs of when the guys were building the the Twin Towers years ago. And, and, and the Empire State Building, they're all Empire walking around State with nothing. Building. Walking around with, with in barefoot on poles, just like a mile high up in the sky, and eating their lunch. Yeah, with their legs draping over the edge. Nuts. <laughs> it's stupid. Wouldn't happen today. No, no, <laughs> no. You get a big crane up there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the the yeah, Dewey on the bridge is my best moment because I'm just like, mm-hmm. <sighs> I, can, I can feel it's it's like when I I remember when the Spider Man game came out for playstation and xbox and it was an open world and you could swing back and forth and anytime i missed a swing i dived off like the empire state building there was yeah, something yeah. in my gut that I, I just tied it up because i felt like i was falling as well the fastness <laughs> of the motion going down and then i would just like you know right before i hit the pavement i would make spider-man swing <laughs> you know, just... excellent <laughs> <laughs> I once did a VR tightrope game, um, which was based on the movie The Walk. Mm-hmm. And it was a PlayStation thing. You put the headset on and you walked between the two towers. And all you're doing is walking across a floor. And yeah. I, w- I, I almost collapsed. I just couldn't handle it at all. Because was, that, was that close the, to reality? The VR huh? technology, when, when you look down, you can see that sheer drop. Even though you know you're stood on a on your own floor. I just couldn't handle it at all. My legs were shaking. I had to stop. I had to take the thing off. It was terrible. <laughs> Awful. It's <laughs> torture, they did another, right? Yeah, they did another one as well, which was a shark cage. You go down in a shark cage, and you can look around you and see everything, and then all of a sudden the shark attacks you from the, from the angle that. you're not looking at. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Why anyway. can't I be in a whorehouse? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're going up, you know, you're walking around, you're going upstairs, and then you're you're trying to cop a feel with this woman, and you open it up, it's an old man, he's just staring at you. Uh, well, you know, uh, well, Red, I thought, I hope we did you justice. It was a pleasure watching and revisiting this movie again. Um, mm. Yeah, it was. It's it's it was fun. The characters it fun. make it fun. It is fun, and, but I. I don't think I'd, I would, I'd like to think of it as a horror film. I know I know it's got some thriller. gnarly kills. It's a thriller, yeah. isn't it, more than a horror film? Yeah. You know, that opening sequence with the with the um the the billionaire and his and his girlfriend and the, the chauffeur and all that kind of stuff. That's a good little kind of creepy Coke. little sequence. Yeah, yeah. But but on the whole, I feel it's it's it almost plays out for me like a cop thriller and in no way does it sit along the sides of Howling and um, um, American Wolf in London for me. Yeah, yeah, but it's a good movie. It's okay. It's mm. fun. It is. I like it. No, I like it is a movie, but it's not a werewolf film, which so, is what's really misleading about it. I think we're watching it for Gregory Hines and, and Alfred Finney's ass. Yeah, pretty much. And Reginald Van Johnson swearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. I, I reckon so. That's the, <laughs> those are the main points. <laughs> All right. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we have to say this is our first video we're doing of 2023. Yeah. Happy New Year, everyone. Yeah. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. We're actually recording three on the bounce right now. So we're just, this is Wolf and Dunn. Uh, we're next going to do Alligator and Hellraiser Bloodline, uh, which I watched the best both of those last. movies today. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> dear. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you have a good uh, start of the new year. We'll see you soon. And as always, stick to the roads. And the best of luck. 
See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.